Hey guys, welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. We are excited to be crafting with you today, and today we are gonna conquer um, the rotary blade and felt and all these wonderful things to make a felt flower dream catcher. Um, so this is gonna be a really fun project. I think that you guys are going to love it, and I can't wait to dive in with you. So for our supply list today, um, we do need our Cricut Maker because we're using wool felt. Now, you can definitely make this project or other rolled felt flowers uh, with your uh, Cricut Explorer, Explorer Air 2. Um, it just needs to be acrylic felt or the thin, thinner, excuse me, um, Cricut felt that can be cut with your uh, fine point blade. Um, so for today's purposes, we are using our Maker. We're gonna be using a rotary blade. We're going to be using our fabric grip mat. We also have some needle nose pliers. Uh, we have lots of fun wool felt. This is from Benzie Designs. We love Benzie's um, wool felt. They have an amazing selection of colors. Uh, they also have this awesome tab on their website um, that's like different color palettes. So if you uh, find it challenging to put color schemes together, color palettes together, that's an awesome resource for you guys to utilize. Um, you can just purchase the entire pack straight from Benzi and the pricing is really uh, affordable as well. So check them out if you haven't already. We also have this nine inch embroidery hoop. We have um, a glue gun and glue sticks. We have these um, floor, it's, it's a florist wire. This is like a wrapped florist wire. Um, I think these are about 18 inches, but that length is not necessarily important and I'll show you why in a little bit. Um, we will need scissors. And then we also have some awesome trimmings. Um, this will be the hanky downy portion of the dream catcher. So just a variety of trimmings, some laces, some pom poms, um, slightly different colors too like these kind of all go together but they're not like this is more oatmeal -y. this one has a little bit more of a yellow tint um so just a good variety of different trimmings okay that should be it uh for our supplies and now i'm going to go over into design space and show you guys um some work there okay guys so we are over in design space and we're going to upload some of the flower files the maker's going to learn flower files if you guys aren't a member of maker's going to learn you are missing out um these are just a few of the awesome files um that we have available for our members we have uh, monthly and yearly memberships that you guys can take advantage of um anyway so i have already uploaded them into design space i'm going to go and search for them so we have these awesome rolled flower um, files. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and choose a couple of flowers that we want to do. I love this one. It comes out looking like a rose, which is really pretty. Um, and then this sort of swirly one is really fun as well. So I will select that one. Um, I'm going to insert those images and then I'm gonna hide one of them um, and work with the other for right now. So the felt that we have is six by nine inches uh, which limits us a little bit honestly I accidentally ordered the wrong thing um, but that's okay because we need smaller flowers for this dream catcher as well anyway so I need to keep that in mind when I'm selecting the size of um, the file that we'll be cutting so um, this honestly is sort of perfectly sized already um, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit make it so once I hit make it, um, I'm gonna put the felt on my mat, my fabric grip mat, press continue. I'm connecting to my machine here. And then I'm gonna go in and, um, oh, it was already there. You can do a search for all felts if you aren't sure, but we use wool felt a lot, so that is why we have favorited it. Uh, so I'm gonna select the wool felt option. Um, leave my pressure at default and then I will hit um, I'll load my mat and press cut okay guys so I'm gonna go ahead and load my rotary blade here um, if you haven't seen this wonderful little caddy before um, we love this thing and it houses all of our uh, blades and knives and all that fun stuff uh, we do have a video that we will link at the bottom uh, about Cricut storage 
uh, if you're interested in seeing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this blade out. Um, if you don't know how, it's super easy. So I'll just open this over here and remove my fine point blade. This, um, the part that looks like the gear that's not covered by the shield has to be facing backward. Um, and then make sure that it's not too high. And then I'll just clamp it shut. Super easy. Now it's ready for my mat to be loaded. So I'll insert that and let it cut. Okay, now that we have this one cut out, I wanna go ahead and hide that one and view this other one. Um, again, it imported at pretty much the exact size that I need for my felt. Um, so I can go ahead and hit make it. Again, select the wool felt option um, and then just follow the same steps. You will still be, of course, using um, your rotary blade. Okay, now that that one is cut out, I wanna show you guys another cool um, flower option. It's actually a hyacinth. Um, and I wanted to show you specifically because this cut file doesn't look like a flower. Um, but it is, I promise it's really pretty. Um, let's go ahead and hide this layer that we don't need anymore. And then um, size this. I want to make mine a little bit bigger. You can definitely make it smaller though if you want um, some some smaller sprig type pieces. Um, so again, I'm just gonna hit make it um, and select my wool felt uh, material option. Okay, and then I wanna show you all how to make some cute leaves in Design Space. We do have a leaf um, file on Makers Gonna Learn. It has a little stem on it, which is super cute. Uh, but I just wanna show you guys a quick Design Space hack that we like using basic shapes. Um, so I'm gonna go over to the left hand side where the shape option is and select shapes. And then I'm gonna select the heart shape. And I want to go to the bottom left part of that heart and unlock the um, shape ratio, size ratio, whatever you wanna call it, so that I can make this shape just a tiny bit more narrow. Um, after I do that, I want to duplicate this. I can do that a couple different ways. I can right click and press duplicate, or I can go over here into um, the right hand panel where all of my layers are, make sure that that heart layer is duplicated, or selected rather, and then press duplicate. Either way is totally fine, whatever your preference is. Um, so now all I wanna do is select um, this heart that I already have selected, go up to the top menu where it says flip, and then press flip vertical. Um, then I'm just gonna move it place it right on top of each other. And I wanna make sure that that's centered. Uh, so I'll select both of the layers and then go up to the top where it says align and press center horizontally. Uh, it actually didn't move, so that's a good indicator that we had it spot on to begin with. Yay for me. <laughs> um, anyway, so now I want to select both of these layers and then press weld so that it, it looks like a nice one piece leaf um, and it's in one layer. Okay, I wanna size this um, to two inches high. So I have that layer selected. Um, I can drag it to two inches if I want to, or I can just come up here to the top um, in the height category and type in two. Um, that, size is very dependent on your personal preference, um, the size of flowers that you're using and everything. I think two inches will just look good with the flowers that I've done. So that's why I'm choosing two. Um, and now I want to make, let's see here, um, I wanna make one leaf per flower. Uh, so count how many flowers you're gonna be needing or you're going to be making uh, and make that many leaves as well. I'm gonna have 12 flowers on my dream catcher. Um, so I'm gonna duplicate this um, a few times over here to get my 12. I also need to keep in mind, again, that my fell is six by nine. So uh, when I'm arranging them, if I put this over here on the seven, it's not gonna cut well. It's actually not gonna work at all. 
Okay, so I have these four leaves right here, um, and I can continue to duplicate just one leaf if I want to um, another, what, eight times, or I can select all four of these leaves and press duplicate two more times um, so that it duplicates all four at the same time, which is nice and time-saving. In hindsight, I should have moved those four down before uh, I duplicate it again, but that's okay since it's only four layers. It didn't take long to move it. So I'm finished with these. Um, I do want to attach them so that um, if right now, if I just try to cut these as is, I'm gonna show you what we'll do. I'm gonna hit make it. Um, and it's gonna try to move some of those leaves over um, just to get more cut out of my fabric. But what it doesn't know is that my fabric is only six by nine. Uh, so if I try to put those over there, um, it, it will cut nothing. <laughs> it would cut my mat and I don't want that. Um, so I can fix that a couple of ways. I could manually drag these, which is what I'm going to do because it's only um, four. It doesn't take long to do that. So I can manually put these where I want, or what I could have done um, is attach or weld those together as they were on the canvas so that uh, it didn't move them when I hit make it. All right, so now that they are um, in place, I'm just gonna hit continue. Again, uh, these are gonna be cut out of wool felt, so that is selected and these are ready to cut out. Okay, so this has finished cutting. Um, I do wanna point out when you're working with felt and these um, like rolled flowers, if you use a super small size for your flowers, um, some of these more intricate uh, flowers don't cut really well. Um, so keep that in mind when you're selecting your size. Um, this one in particular, I, I'm not sure I would do too much smaller than this, um, just because like right here, um, it tends to get thin and sometimes it kind of disintegrates when you pull it off the mat. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, do a test run and see how your felt is cutting uh, with the size of the, the files that you're choosing. So we're just gonna pull this off of our mat and get to rolling. Okay, so I just have um, a regular hot glue gun here. I generally like a hot glue gun that has a smaller head on it. Uh, my favorite is our Lynn Lilly hot glue gun and it has walked away. I don't know where it is. Um, so we're gonna be using this one today. Um, just start with small, I like to start my flower with a small amount of glue, um, just, just to get it, um, just to get the base of it started really nicely. Um, and then you can add more glue, like longer strips of glue as you're going. So I'm literally just rolling that over on top of um, itself. Just, and you roll, roll the whole thing. Um, I will probably use about four inch strips. Um, again, what, like the temp of your glue gun um, will play a, fact, a factor in how, um, how much glue you wanna put out too. So if you have like a low temp glue gun, um, you're not gonna put that much glue out because it will dry really quickly and uh, you won't be able to get your flour rolled before um, the glue has dried. So um, think about that for sure. Okay, so we are finishing up uh, the last bit of this roll. Um, again, just using small sections of glue and rolling. Um, you can get different looks with the exact, like if I were to cut this out, um, the exact same size, the exact same pattern, um, I could get two different looks out, or probably more than two, honestly, by depending on how tightly I rolled it. So if I'm gonna roll it really tightly, uh, obviously I would get a smaller flower. If I'm rolling it looser, I kinda rolled this one looser. Um, it's a more open, um, bigger flower. So keep that in mind as well uh, when you're rolling. Um, I'm finishing up here. I'm just gonna add extra glue to this circular part that is the bottom of the flower. Uh, so I'm gonna make sure that it lands on the bottom right there. You see how it caps that off nicely. I've got some strings here, but we'll get those off later. Um, a little tip if you didn't know, 
see how that has sort of dried on there? Well, I don't want that on there. So I can actually take like a heat gun or a hair dryer or something like that, heat it back up and pull it off. It comes off easily that way. Um, anyway, so I've got that little flower finished and I'm going to finish rolling uh, my other ones. Again, make sure um, each of these flower files has, um, the rolled flower files has this round spot on the bottom. So make sure that you're starting from the opposite end um, to roll your flower. I'm adding a small dab of glue and I'm gonna just start my roll. If you are concerned about your fingers getting burnt with the glue, um, you can all, uh, absolutely use like needle nose power pliers or something like that um, to manipulate your felt at the beginning of it. Uh, this isn't a super, super hot glue gun, so I'm not too concerned about it. But um, I'm gonna roll this one the exact same way that I rolled the other ones, just with like four inch um, strips of glue, rolling tightly or loosely, depending on what look that you want. Um, and finishing up with that rounded spot on the bottom. Okay, so we're just about finished with this one. Uh, we're just gonna add a little bit of extra glue on the bottom there where that flat part is, because again, that is the bottom of our flower. Uh, and we'll put it on the bottom. Um, as you can see, the bottom of this flower is actually a little bit bigger than that rounded spot, and that's okay because um, honestly, I just use this um, similarly to this to put my stem on. Um, so it's okay that it's smaller than the finished product. This is a super cute uh, little kind of flat pinwheel-ish flower. Um, I really like this file. So now what I'm gonna do um, is show you guys this cute uh, hyacinth flower. That's that weird um, file that I showed you guys in Design Space that didn't look like a flower. So I'm gonna show you guys how to roll that really quickly. Um, I went ahead and cut this piece of floral um, stem. Um, it, it's like these 18 inch, I think they're 18 inch. Let me measure them really quick. Uh, yeah, they're 18 inch. So I cut them in half um, and use, uh, I get I get two out of one that way. Um, so I have this ready already. You can see it has the cute little slits in it. So that's fine. Um, and all I'm gonna do is run a strip of hot glue um, down this side of this and then fold it over making sure that my ends are all um, even. And then I'll let that dry for just a second. I like to kind of manipulate it uh, after I have glued it just to make sure that I haven't like accidentally glued this together. I want it to be really flexible. Okay, so I have uh, my floral wire here, floral stem, floral wire. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit of glue right here to this edge. You can start with either edge. If you're left-handed, I would think maybe starting with the other one might be easier. Uh, since I'm right-handed, this is the way that I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna put my wire on that dab of hot glue and you see how I've kind of angled it. Um, I wanna do that because as I rotate, as I fold and rotate, um, I want it to kind of go down the stem. Um, so angling that piece of wire, that way helps me do that in a more natural way. Um, so now I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue so that I can start my fold. I'm gonna hold that and let it dry really um, good before I start um, twisting it down the stem just because if this part right here isn't good and set, um, it will move and it will kind of ruin the whole look of the whole flower. So make sure that that is nice and dry before you get started rotating um, the, the hyacinth down your stem. Okay, I am happy now with how that has dried. So now I'm just gonna add a small strip of glue right here and twist this as I go. So make sure it's good and tight and then just twist. Make sure that there is some overlapping as you twist. I'm gonna add some more glue and just finish this off. 
Okay, so at the end, what I want to do um, is just kind of make this even. See this end right here? Um, I want to even up with the bottom of this. Just aesthetically, I think it looks better that way. Look how fun this cute little hyacinth uh, is. It was super easy to do. Uh, it's a fun, different look, and I really like this particular file. Okay, so now I want to show you how I do the stems uh, for my regular flowers. I do have that 18 inch floral wire already. I'm going to take my uh, wire cutters and just snip it right in half there. And then what I will do is take one of those, if I can grab it there. Um, I'm going to put the end in my needle nose pliers just like this. And I will fold it um, in. I don't know if you can see that there. And now, since I have that little flat area, I'm going to grab that with my pliers and then just start rotating um, the end of the stem around so that it creates this spirally type platform um, for my flower to uh, be glued to. So I have a decent uh, platform. Obviously the bigger flower, if, if I make like a giant flower, I'm gonna want a bigger platform than that. So I would just uh, probably not cut this stem in half uh, and use the full length of that 18 inch one. Um, so it, I have it good um, and spiraled. I like that size. And now what I'm gonna do is just take uh, my pliers and bend this under. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one again. Um, just pinching the top of that and rotating it around to make that spirally shape or spirally design. And there we go. So then all I do at this point is add hot glue to the top of that and then press that right into the bottom of my flower. Um, I like to let mine dry so I will kind of just um, put them upside down like that and then let them dry that way. Again, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Uh, just add some hot glue to that stem, put it right there in the middle of my flower and I am good to go. Okay, friends, now that um, my flowers are good and dry, I am ready to assemble them um, on the embroidery hoop. So this is super easy. I particularly like using this uh, florist wire because it's really easy um, to put my flowers on there. And then if I, I'm like, oh, I don't like that and I wanna change it, I can just pull it off um, and, and easily move it. I could have just kind of hot glued this on here um, instead of using these um, platform stems that I showed you guys how to make. I think because it's more, this, this hoop is pretty narrow, um, I think I would have struggled a little bit just placing it nicely and making it not look like squished or kind of falling off. Um, so that's another reason why I liked to use these um, instead of just hot gluing them on there. Again, that's just my preference. You guys feel free to do whatever you want. Um, so I'm just gonna start with a random flower. Um, and in this particular design, I, I kind of want them all to the left. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. Um, but I will, I, I am gonna have um, my uh, my lace and pom-pom and, and that sort of trimmings on the bottom here. So I need to keep that in mind as well when I'm placing. I don't want it to go too far down or this is gonna look squished and odd. Okay, we have so many fun different um, trimmings here. And honestly, this is just um, uh, up to your creative interpretation of what you want to do uh, with which one you start with. Um, I'm just gonna kind of take one and run with it. Um, I will say, think about the design that you want um, in this. I know that I kind of want mine to look like a V at the bottom, so the one that I start with in the middle is gonna be longer than the others. Now, um, you could kind of measure those out uh, and make sure that you're just uh, creating that specific shape um, with the length that you're cutting and the way that you're placing them on here, or um, you can just make them long and then cut them in that shape after. Um, so that is totally up to you. I'm just gonna choose a random piece and get going. Um, so I'm going to, let's see here. I'm gonna use a Lark's head knot um, to put these on here. So that will kind of help me um, determine the length that I want. 
Okay, so I think this is probably a good length. Um, I'm just gonna cut and go with it. So I want to um, even the ends up, um, and then I have this loop up here. I'm gonna put um, it around the hoop, and then I'm putting the ends of those through that hoop, or through the loop, and just pulling tight. So that's a Lark's head knot, um, super easy. And that's how we're gonna put all of them on there. So the, the cool thing about that is it enables you to move them around if you need to. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose uh, the next one that I'm grabbing. Uh, I like the look of not having two of the exact same ones next to each other. Um, again, that's my preference. So, um, and I probably won't, like I wouldn't stick this one right next on this side. So it's not gonna be like, um, the same one is here on each side, the same one is here that's over here, the same one is here that's here. I'm just gonna be totally random because that's my style um, and I just prefer it that way. So again, I have, um, I've evened these ends up right here. I have this loop at the top and then uh, I'm going to put my ends through the loop and pull it tight. Okay, now I have this fun pom-pom trimming. It's the same way as the other. Um, it might be a little bit more difficult just because it has all of these pieces to manipulate it, uh, but it's it's the same process to put it on. I love this pom-pom one. I think it is adorable. Um, you guys could do these in different colors too, uh, but I, I like this particular look uh, with them all being similar. So you're just gonna continue this exact process until you have, um, it, have it as wide on your hoop as you want it. Okay, so make sure that you have a nice, sharp, good pair of fabric scissors. Uh, it'll make cutting this a whole lot easier. That way you're not leaving like gnawed looking edges. Um, and then I like to start in the middle, uh, which is gonna kind of be right here. And then just make your, uh, like this is gonna be my longest point. So now I have reference for cutting the rest of it. Um, and then I'm just gonna kind of go in and angle it this is not exact guys so don't stress about it being exact um, obviously it's easier to cut off more so err on the side of caution um, and then I can I can in other words I can angle it more later if I want to but if I start out super angled and I'm like man I wish I hadn't done that I can't add it back so um, err on the side of caution with that and then because I'm right-handed, going this way is gonna be awkward. So then I'm just gonna start uh, from this lowest point and kind of go back up, referencing the length of my shortest piece up here. Okay guys, I'm pretty happy with the shape of this. Now, once I get it hung vertically and it's hanging down, uh, I may look at it and be like, okay, this needs to uh, be shaped up a little bit differently. And that's totally fine, but this is a good starting point. Um, so now that I have all of this lace and fun stuff on it, I'm ready to add my flowers. Okay, so just pick a random flower to start with. I will say, um, keep in mind what colors you have, um, kind of the shapes. For instance, I don't wanna put all three of these necessarily right next to each other. Um, so I wanna keep that in mind uh, when I'm spacing my flowers out. Um, the same with these, these are different shapes, but they're the same color, so I don't necessarily wanna put those together, so on and so forth. Um, so just grab a random flower. Um, let's see. I'm gonna start with, we'll start with this pretty blue one here. And place it, you can place it on the inside or the outside of this hoop. Um, I like to get it pretty far down uh, on my hoop so that the flower is actually touching the hoop. Um, you can leave it up further if you want to so that you can manipulate it more after it's set. Uh, this is just my personal preference. And then um, I'm gonna just take this end of the stem um, and wrap pretty tightly um, around this hoop. Now, leave the end, see this extra? We're gonna leave that on there because we're going to attach our leaves that we cut out in a little bit to those ends. So it's important that you leave those on there. 
So uh, I'm just gonna choose another flower uh, and then just start randomly adding all of the flowers on there. Okay, so I have these placed um, how I want them. You can see I didn't really, I, I didn't put any of the colors um, side by side, so it just spaces it out and makes it look really nice and bright and fun, um, like a cool wildflower bouquet. I really love that. Um, so now we are ready to put on our little leaves. Um, again, remember I told you to leave the stems uh, on there so that we can put these on. So all I'm gonna do is put a little bit of dab of glue um, at the end of my cutout, and then I'm gonna go and put it on and just squeeze it on the end of each one of those stems. So like I said, there should be one stem per flower that you put on there. Um, Go ahead and put all of those on. If for some reason you finish and you're like, man, all of my leaves are up here, um, then just kind of adjust them and make them so that they're they're evenly spaced on both the in and outside of your hoop. So again, I just put a little bit of glue on the end of my leaf, stuck that stem in or on there and then squeeze the very end of it um, so that it creates that cute little puckered look. And then we're gonna do all of those. And then that should about wrap it up. So we'll get, we'll get on those and get this project finished. All right, so we got all of these leaves glued on here. Um, and you can see, I like, if you can, uh, try to keep the stems a little bit longer, uh, maybe cutting them in half for um, these these larger embroidery hoops is not a fantastic idea. If you can just use one instead of half and keep those stems a little bit longer so that you can manipulate them a little bit better, um, it's easier. Obviously, it worked that way. Um, we just had to work a little bit harder for it, but that's okay. Um, so you see how I kind of have them evenly spaced on the inside and the outside instead of just, um, you know, heavy on the in or heavy on the out. Again, that is personal preference. If you wanted them all on the out for a particular look, that is perfectly fine as well. All right, guys, there we have this adorable felt flower dream catcher with these fun uh, laces and pom-poms and all of that wonderful um, look. It's such a adorable uh, little project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you love these rolled flowers like I do, um, go to makersgonnalearn.com. If you're not a member yet, become a member and you too can make this wonderful project. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, go ahead and do that so that you can craft with us day after day um, and make wonderful little projects like this. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and enjoy a wonderful time of crafting.